Tony, why don't you uh, go ahead? Okay, thank you very much, Dick. I'd just like to welcome everyone who's attending tonight's uh, webinar on the District 7910 Youth Protection Policy Training. My name is Tony Gasparro. I'm the Youth Protection Officer for the District uh, 7910, and I'm a member of the Massachusetts Area Rotary Club. First, I'd like to thank Karen Gaffney for this opportunity, and I'd also like to thank uh, Diana Nesterova, District Youth Service Chair, for her support in putting this all together. Uh, I'd also like to uh, thank Pat Doyle for her help as well, and also certainly Dick Anderson for his technical support tonight. So we're going to be going through a PowerPoint presentation that I put together. And uh, I'm hoping that it will provide uh, club members and club presidents the support and the assistance they may need in training individuals to be uh, properly able to work with students, youth, under the age of 18. So this is uh, our first uh, attempt at this. And uh, hopefully it will serve its purpose well. And if not, we'll take your questions, we'll take feedback, and we'll put it into future uh, presentations to make sure that it's something that meets the needs of all of our uh, clubs in the district. So we'll start with the first slide, Dick, and we'll talk um, about um, the phones being muted. We appreciate that happening, and uh, we'll take your questions at the end uh, of this meeting. Okay, okay. Dick? Um, this, our district youth protection policy, uh, I want to mention right at the onset, does not include anything that's involved with the Essex program, which is involved with um, youth, leader, youth visiting from other countries and youth exchange of American students to other countries. All of those programs fall under the Essex program, which is in compliance with the United States government and it has its own sets of rules through Essex. And this training does not particularly cover that, po that program. So this is different from that. OK, Dick? There you go. Next slide. OK, thank you. Yeah, I was a little bit uh, Let's talk a little bit about uh, a general statement here as far as how we, our, how we will work with youth. District 7910 strives to create a safe environment for all youth who participate in Rotary activities. To the best of their ability, Rotarians, Rotarian spouses, and partners and other volunteers must safeguard the children and young people has started. and protect them from physical, sexual, and emotional abuse. OK, Dick? Sorry. Next slide. Yep. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the definitions of some of the terms we're going to be using. First of all, a volunteer is any adult involved with a rotary youth activity who interacts directly with youth, whether supervised or unsupervised. A youth program participant is anyone who participates in a rotary youth program, whether a child or an adult. Next slide. Club compliance. The district governor is responsible for supervision and control of all youth activities in the district. District 7910 will monitor all participating clubs and ensure that they comply with youth protection certification requirements. Next. When we talk about volunteer selection and screening, all Rotarian and non-Rotarian volunteers interested in working with youth program participants must meet RI and district eligibility requirements. RI prohibits the membership and participation of any volunteer who has admitted to been convicted of or otherwise been found to have engaged in sexual abuse or harassment. 
Next. If a person is accused of sexual abuse or harassment and the law enforcement investigation is inconclusive or if law enforcement declines to investigate, additional safeguards are necessary to protect any youth participants with whom the accused may have future contact as well as the accused. A person later cleared of charges may apply to be reinstated as a youth program volunteer. However, reinstatement is not a right and reinstatement of his or her former position is not guaranteed. Next. Next. Training. Mm -hmm. District 7910 and member clubs may provide youth protection training and information on youth programs. The district youth protection officer will oversee the training sessions. Next. Next. Allegation handling and follow through. District 7910 takes all allegations of abuse or harassment seriously and shall handle them in accordance with RI reporting guidelines. The district will cooperate with all law enforcement agencies, child protection services, and legal investigations and will not interfere with official investigations when conducting its own independent review. District 7910 will appoint a youth protection officer to evaluate and review files, policies, and allegations regularly. This particular statement ends the um, district um, youth protection policy that was approved at a district conference about two years ago. And now we're going to get into the RI reporting guidelines as to whether uh, something has occurred or not. All allegations of abuse or harassment will be taken seriously and must be handled within the following guidelines, remembering that the safety and well-being of young people must always be the first priority. Next. Some definitions with regards to RI's policy. Sexual abuse, engaging in implicit or explicit sexual acts with a young person or forcing or encouraging a young person to engage in implicit or explicit sexual acts alone or with another person of any age or of the same or opposite sex. Sexual harassment includes sexual advances requests for sexual favors, or verbal, physical conduct of a sexual nature. In some cases, sexual harassment precedes sexual abuse and is used by sexual predators to desensitize, or in other words, groom their victims. Next. Some examples of sexual harassment include sexual epithets, jokes, written or spoken references to sexual conduct, talking about one's sex life in the presence of a young person, or comments about an individual's sexual activity or prowess, verbal abuse of a sexual nature, display of sexually suggestive objects, pictures, or drawings. Other examples include sexual leering or whistling, any inappropriate physical contact, such as brushing or touching, obscene language or gestures, and suggestive or insulting comments. Who should determine if it is abuse or harassment? Upon hearing allegations, Adults should not determine whether the alleged conduct constitutes sexual abuse or sexual harassment. Instead, 
after ensuring the safety of the student, the adult should immediately report all allegations to the appropriate child protection or law enforcement authorities. In some countries, this reporting is required by law. Allegation reporting guidelines. Any adult to whom a Rotary Youth Program participant reports an allegation of sexual abuse or harassment must follow these reporting guidelines. One, receive the report. A, listen attentively and stay calm. Acknowledge that it takes a lot of courage to report abuse or harassment. Be encouraging, do not express shock, horror, or disbelief. B, assure privacy, but not confidentiality. Explain that you will have to tell someone about the abuse slash harassment in order to make it stop and to ensure that it doesn't happen to others. Next, C, get the facts, but don't interrogate. Ask questions that establish facts, who, what, when, where, and how. Reassure the young person that he or she did the right thing in telling you. Avoid asking why questions, which may be interpreted as questioning the young person's motives. Remember that your responsibility is to present the story to the proper authorities. D, be non-judgmental and reassure. Avoid criticizing anything that has happened or anyone who may be involved. It's especially important not to blame or criticize the young person. Emphasize that the situation was not his or her fault and that it is brave and mature to come to you. E, document the allegation. Make a written record of the conversation, including the date and time, as soon as after the report as you can. Number two, protect the young person. Ensure the safety and well-being of the young program participant by removing him or her from the situation immediately and preventing all contact from the alleged abuser or harasser. Next. Number three, report the allegation to appropriate authorities, child protection or law enforcement. Now this, this page is probably the most important page in the slide presentation. Immediately report all cases of sexual abuse or harassment, first to the appropriate law enforcement authorities and then to the club and district leadership for follow through. In District 7910, the appropriate law enforcement office is the local police department. In most situations, the first Rotary contact is the lead person from the Rotary clubs sponsoring the event, who was responsible for seeking the advice of appropriate agencies in interacting with them. If the allegation involves this Rotarian, the district youth program chair or district governor should be the first Rotary contact. District 7910 will cooperate with police or legal investigations. District 7910 has researched local, state, and national laws related to sexual abuse and harassment prevention and notes the following legal requirements of which all adult volunteers 
participating in the program must be aware. It is expected that all Rotary Clubs of District 7910 that engage in activities involving, involving young people under 18 years of age would have their adult volunteers properly screened for child safety. This should include reading the District 7910 Youth Protection Policies and training PowerPoint as well as a Tory criminal offender record information check. A Tory application is included on the last page of this PowerPoint presentation. A completed form should be forwarded to the District 7910 Youth Protection Officer, myself, at tmgasparo at gmail.com. And to make this easier for every club, I've included a copy of that application at the end of this PowerPoint presentation. So you can simply tear it off, fill it out, scan it, and email it to me, and I will conduct the uh, Corey check and report back if necessary. Number four, avoid gossip and blame. Don't tell anyone about the report other than those required by the guidelines. Be careful to protect the rights of both the victim and the accused during an investigation. District 7910 maintains the privacy of any accused persons. And finally, do not challenge or contact the alleged offender. In cases of abuse, the interrogation must be left to the law enforcement authorities. In cases of harassment, the district governor is responsible with follow-through and will contact the alleged offender after the young person has been removed to a safe environment. The district governor may designate this task to a district youth protection officer or a district review committee. And finally, some pertinent information. In case you need to contact the district governor, her contact information is there, Karen M. Gaffney, with her cell number and her email address, my name, Anthony Gasparo, my cell number, and my email address. And the last slide is the copy of the Corey check application for uh, clubs to use to uh, screen in uh, volunteers. Now, I, this is a... Uh, a sort of a, a general guideline to go by as, a, as events occur, and hopefully they won't occur, but if they do, we, will, we may need to tweak some of these um, procedures based on what happens. But according to the, the general guidelines as presented, you notice it mentions notifying uh, local police authorities, local uh, agencies, which would give us um, some protection if you think about an incident occurring. For example, let's say that an incident does occur at a particular Rotary event. The parents of that child would want to be assured that the Rotary Club, the Rotary District as the sponsor, would have notified a local police authority and not just done the investigations on their own. Um, so in order to protect us, from any kind of um, parental backlash on anything like that, we would want to immediately engage a local police authority on any kind of an event like this. And then after they are engaged and they determine the, uh, the severity of the incident, it will either then be handled by them if it's an abuse situation or if it's a harassment situation, they may pass it off to the Rotary District. To handle. So that's why we, the policy sort of reads that way right now. So that's it for the Powell presentation. I see that some people have asked questions, Dick, and I'd love to take those questions and uh, see if we can help people uh, understand this even better. Okay, thank you, Tony. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is unmute everybody. So if you're not speaking, please mute your, your phone or your microphone. Okay, everybody's unmuted. 
Um, who has the first question? Can I just clarify that this is Susan Rack, by the way. Um, I was under the impression that each of us had had a Corey um, check already. That's not true? I don't have a uh, high so I don't have I don't have any record of that. I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, I don't know if have you had one done previously within the Rotary District? All right. Um, my next question would be who must have the quarry? We have events that are community events where all hands are on deck and there are children. Does everybody have to have a quarry? Well, let's talk about that because that's, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, be a little more specific about a, a typical event. About would, it, would it be like passing out books at a school? Oh, I'm you know, sorry. Are you asking me a question, Tony? Yes. Okay, so pancake breakfast. Pancake breakfast, uh, all Rotarians are there cooking, the public is there. Um, I think if you have Rotarians there serving and... And I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna draw a little scenario that may sound uh, extreme but possible. Uh, sometimes youngsters go to the restroom. A Rotarian volunteer goes to the restroom. The child is in there alone with the person in the restroom. The child comes out and makes a claim. All right. Uh -huh. So there's the pot, that, that, that's a situation where something could could occur or could be claimed to occur. So it's probably a good idea that if Rotarians are involved with something like that, they should be quarry checked, or you make sure that uh, th there's never a situation where there's an, a, a single Rotarian volunteer with a single child in a place like a restroom. Hard to say. I know. It's very difficult to predict. So do we just go ahead and quarry everyone? I, to me, that would be erring on the side of caution and probably a good idea. All right. My next question is cost. I know Corey's cost. Who's picking up the cost of this? The district has applied for and become a quarry uh, sort of agency, and we, we, do, we get them done for free. Wow. Okay. That was That's one of the terrific. first things I did. Yep. So yep. your recommendation is I give this application to everybody in the club? Yep. Whoever's going to be involved with youth under 18. Okay. Tony, this is Dick. Can you check the uh, the uh, chat board? Carol Toomey has a comment and Liz Caprillion has a comment. Uh, let's see. The chalkboard is a funny thing that looks like uh, it's next to the number of the participants. I can read them to you. Carol Toomey said, on the, in answer to the Corey question, um, they do not last forever. She believes it's two years, but something you might want to check. And it's, then, uh, it's actually three years. Okay. Christine Penny is asking, what's the processing time for each quarry? Uh, the processing time is, it's, it's interesting, you're dealing with the state. I, I conducted one myself and it took over a week. So, and they don't give a specific time, it depends on their load. I'm saying at least a week. Okay, Liz Caprillian is saying, how about this? A child comes to a Rotarian to make a claim. Can the Rotarian whip out their cell phone to record what the child is reporting? Is that okay? No. Okay. Yeah, how about this? Interact, Interact Club is meeting. I go to a visit. Uh, I go to visit them. Do I need to be quarried? That would be a good idea. Yep. 
All right. Another one, should any Rotarian ever drive any child to any Rotarian event or if have at least two club members in attendance for any transportation? Well, that's a one of those slippery little slopes. Uh, I, I personally wouldn't suggest doing that. I think the children should get their own transportation to an event, and I don't think having another Rotarian in the car is going to waive any, any responsibility. Okay, and then what about what about a student-to-student -student sexual harassment? What should be done with that? Uh, I would, um, and that's always a possibility too. I would uh, ex take the information down and pass it on to the authorities, just like we outlined. Okay. Yeah, um, let them deal with it. Gotcha. Another one is, um, could you just repeat the process the club should follow to quarry all members of the club? Is it a good idea? And you know, how do you do it? Once again, the form is the last page of the PowerPoint presentation. Have each member fill it out completely and legibly. I would be scanned an email to me at my address, tmgasparrow at gmail.com. I will also put them into the uh, criminal offensive record uh, information area and start the process. Okay. What about bullying? Is that it's non-sexual, but it's still harassment? Is that a, is that a flaw here? Well, we're really talking about uh, items of a sex, sexual nature in this policy. Um, if, if bullying is is occurring, if a, if a Rotarian is bullying and someone makes a claim, I would stop and listen to the child and. Make a, make a determination as to how far we want to go with this. Um, if it's happening, then at least the club should uh, take care of it and uh, speak to that person. They may have to speak to the child's parents, too, and okay. act on it. Do we need a quarry for interviewing students for Ryla at the high school? Um, it's probably a good idea, yeah, especially if... You know, I've been to Ryla interviews where I've been supposed to be there with some other people, and for some reason the people are late or they don't show up, and it's just me one-on-one -on -one with a student in the room. So I would say have everybody, Corey, who's going to be doing that. Who in the who in the district has access to Corey records? Just me right now. Okay. And I'm hoping to expand that. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, just clarification, bullying student to student, that was just review again what you were saying? Yeah, I would say uh, accept that claim, take that claim, uh, act on it, pass that information um, back to the parents of the students at least. I don't think it has to go to the local police authorities, but at least to the parents so they'll know what's going on. Uh, another one we have invited students to help in a carnival ticket booth. One kid, one Rotarian. Sounds like a road member needs to be quarried or shift to two adults and one kid. Um, let's see. I'm looking at that question. Yeah, if you're going to have a, an adult, a Rotarian or a student, that Rotarian definitely needs to be quarried. And, uh, and I don't think it guarantees any clearance by having um, um, two Rotarians with a child in the booth. That, that's not a good idea either. Okay. And I guess the next question is how a quarry record is stored for the district under secure server or what? The, actually, the, the, they are not – I don't store them. Um, I input all the information into the state. The state is storing them on their secure server that I have access to, and um, the only, I, I don't have any I don't have any record of that information back to me. I can only see it. I can't do anything with it. 
We might have a problem with Karen Gaffney's email address. Looks like it's it should be Gmail. Karen M. Gaffney at gmail.com, right? Did we? Yeah, I saw. Uh, we have our first iteration of this had her old email. Her new email is Karen M. Gaffney at gmail.com. Yeah, it might so be. If any old if any old copies got out, it should be right. Karen M. Gaffney at gmail.com. Gotcha. Um, how quickly with core you process? I believe you said that can be anywhere between a week and a month. Yeah, yeah. And as soon as I get them, I'm going to submit them. Gotcha. And submitted Corey forms are shredded. Yeah. Uh, I, w- I will. I will actually keep them until the state posts their information on their website, and then I will destroy them. Right. Gotcha. Uh, question, does the district have the resources in order to have mo- all members quarry checked? Well, that's a daunting thing because we have a th- over a 1,000 members in the district, and right now it's only me. Uh, so I don't know if we have the capacity yet. We've um, This training has opened up a little bit of a can of worms, so we're going to find out what my capacity is. Uh, if the input is pretty simple online. You can drip through them very quickly, um, so I'll have to see how, how I can keep up. Uh, we, are going, we are going to be able to add other people besides myself to do the data entry, and if the load gets large enough, then I'll talk to Karen, Gaffney, district governor, and we'll figure out what we're going to do. Um, will Club Runner, for, will we have any indication in Club Runner um, or reporting capabilities to keep track of which members do currently have or do not have quarries? Well, I think every club should keep track, and um, if they actually don't hear back from me, it's probably a good thing. But there's no, there's nothing in Club Runner that I'm aware of. I don't know about you. Okay. Do we have other questions? I see one here. It says, when do you recommend going to school officials instead of or before uh, police, particularly with interact students. I think it depends on what the activity is and your comfort level with the school administration. There could be instances where you might go to school administration or school officials instead of or before the police, uh, especially with interact students. That could occur. But if you're at an event that's, um, that is off school hours and there are no school officials around, and that happens too, then you may default to the local police authorities right away. And yes, we will put up the uh, up-to-date version of PowerPoint correcting the typos that we had along with uh, the audio of yes. this, uh, uh, this presentation um, yep. as soon as they're available. Okay, any other questions? Going once. So Liz can question says from Liz it says uh, is lease liability risk for rotor to go straight to police? Wouldn't that be the main default approach? It, it is. It, it is the least liable, less risky for us to go right to the police. That's right. And that's what the policy states. However, if, as someone mentioned, an interact activity where something occurs and you have a relationship with school uh, administration where you can handle it right then, that might be a good idea, but it depends. A lot of times these things are not happening in school. They're out of school or after school hours. I don't see any more questions, Dick, do you? Nope, I don't see any more either. Okay. It's going twice. All right, I want to thank everybody. Thank Tony, and uh, we'll let you know when the recording is posted and where we've put the... uh, Everybody take care and have a great evening. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.